Good evening, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be uh, reviewing uh, simple circuits and then taking a look at uh, what happens when we put resistors into se in series. So first, uh, we saw uh, yesterday in uh, the lab that we did that when we co connected a battery and connected a wire to one side and took that wire and went to one side of a light bulb and then went from the other side of the light bulb back to the battery, the light bulb turned on. So let's talk about what happened. Well, uh, the battery provided an energy difference, okay? And that energy difference, when there was a path that the electrons could move through, then uh, caused the, uh, the electrons to flow through that wire. Now, uh, you'll notice as soon as you connected, the light bulb went on right away. It didn't have to wait for electrons from the battery to move through the wire and get to the light bulb. Now, you may or may not have tested this, but you could tell because no matter how long you made that first wire, the light bulb came on at the same time, okay? And uh, so what happens is, is that there are already electrons all throughout that wire, okay? And in the light bulb, in the filament, the part that lights up inside the light bulb. And so uh, when we connect that, then all of a sudden there's an electric field there through, throughout that whole wire, Okay, and so all of those electrons at once begin to move through that electric field. Okay, and so that's why when you flip on a light switch at home, the lights come on instantly. Now, if, if you have uh, fluorescent lights, of course, it takes a little while, and that has that's a, a different issue. Let's just put it that way. Okay, but as soon as you put it on, all the electrons start moving uh, instantly in the in the whole circuit, everywhere that it's connected with a reasonable amount of resistance then the electrons begin to shift. Okay, so once again, that's because there's a voltage difference. We've given some of the electrons more energy than other electrons, and then we connect that so that that electric field is felt all the way through a conductor, usually a wire, and in this case, a light bulb, back to the wire, okay? And so we saw that uh, shift almost immediately. Okay. Now, we, we, uh, you also uh, put, put more than one light bulb in. You may have developed a circuit something like you see, see here yesterday. With, we've got the battery and the two light bulbs. Okay. Um, and you may have, when you tried this, you may have found some fairly dimly lit light bulbs, maybe barely glowing. You, and you learned during the lab that uh, this is called a series circuit. And this is what I want to analyze uh, more closely in today's video. So our definition of a series circuit is one where there's only one path for the electrons to follow around the circuit. So if you just put your finger on the battery, move off of the, the positive side of the battery, you can pick either, but move off the positive side of the battery and you start moving along. If you never have to make a choice, you only have one way to go before you get back to the battery, then that's a series circuit. So, as, as uh, we have a circuit like this set up, you notice as soon as we connect the wires here, uh, connect the last wire to the battery, then we have a pathway, okay, uh, from the battery down through both light bulbs and back to the battery. Uh, and the electrons at one of the battery terminals has more energy than the uh, electrons at the other end of that uh, battery terminal. Okay, and so as soon as we uh, flip the switch and or connect that, then all those electrons feel the the, the energy difference and begin to move. They feel the electric field produced by that energy difference and they begin to uh, shift through that circuit. Okay, so there are three things in particular that we want to look at. We want to look at resistance, voltage, and current and see how all of those things are affected by the fact that now there's a second light bulb in this circuit. Um, the first one that I want to talk about is uh, voltage. Okay, uh, voltage, remember, we've given energy to the electrons in the battery, and then as those electrons move through the circuit, when there's resistance, they, they use up that energy, and that energy turns into something else, in this case, light and heat. Okay, our light bulbs get a little bit warm, and they give off light. And so the energy that was in the electrons, well, they've lost that energy going through the, um, <clears throat> through the light bulbs. So one way to look at that is uh, the analogy of gravity. If we take something and give it gravitational potential energy and then uh, allow that to fall down, it can do work, 
It can transfer that energy to something useful, okay? And then it can return to the pump and pump it back up. So let's picture something that's easy to picture pumping and that's all flowing at the same time. Let's picture a waterfall, okay? So um, we see here we have a, a video of a, uh, a waterfall, a little, uh, what is this, about a three foot waterfall that you could purchase, okay? The water gets pumped up through the inside of it using a water pump, okay? That's like our battery. We're giving, in this case, gravitational potential energy to the molecules of water. The molecules of water then uh, kind of flow through the wire that's th flowing through each pond. And then they get to the end of the pond and they drop down uh, to the next, the next wire. As they're dropping, that's where it's losing energy. Okay, so this would be like one light bulb. It now has uh, that much gravitational potential energy that's being lost there, and we could put a little water wheel or something and, and make that energy useful. In this case, it's just turning into heat. Okay, um, and then it does it again and again and again. And one thing you'll notice in this uh, waterfall example is the energy that our battery gave it, the gravitational potential energy that the pump gave the water, okay, um, has to equal the amount of energy lost in the first waterfall plus the energy lost in the second waterfall plus the energy lost in the third waterfall plus the energy lost in the fourth waterfall. Okay, so in other words, the battery gives it some total amount of energy and then some of that energy is lost going through each waterfall. Well, the same thing would happen in a circuit, like this uh, four, four uh, light bulb series circuit. Okay, we see drawn using the symbols that we uh, learned during the lab. Symbol for the battery here, symbols for the wire are the straight lines, and these uh, jagged lines um, are the symbols for some sort of resistance. In this case, we'll, we'll call them light bulbs. So as the battery gives energy to the electrons, those electrons begin to flow through the circuit like the water. They will lose some of their energy going through the first light bulb, and then some of their energy going through the next light bulb, and some of their energy going through the third light bulb, and some of their energy going through the fourth light bulb. Okay? One way uh, to talk about that would be to, uh, to say that we could, that the total voltage of a series circuit, keep in mind this is only for a series circuit, uh, the total voltage in a series circuit is equal to the voltage drop across resistor one, plus the voltage drop across resistor 2, plus V3, plus V4, okay? So, and that's once again, because the electrons are given so much energy, uh, in electrical potential energy in this case, and that energy is getting lost some across each resistor, okay? Now, if we're gonna do that, that means that now we've got a smaller voltage drop across each resistor, okay? Well, if there's a smaller voltage drop, there's going to be less push to go through the uh, resistor, which means that every time we add a resistor in series, our current is going to get a little bit smaller. Okay, As, as we add a resistor in series, our current will get a little bit sl smaller because there's less voltage to push it through each resistor, and the current has to go through every single resistor. Okay. Um, the uh, other thing that we'll notice is that if the current has gotten smaller, that means the resistance must have gotten bigger. So our total or net resistance has gotten bigger. The term we'll actually use for that is equivalent resistance. In other words, if we look at these th four resistors separately, we could talk about their individual resistances. But if we want to talk about all of them combined as though they were one resistor, that's what we call an equivalent resistance, okay? Um, since our voltage is split up in an additive way, well, the same thing's gonna be true of our resistance. Uh, the resistance is gonna just be the total, or the equivalent resistance will just be resistor one plus resistor two plus resistor three because it has to get through all of them. So it has to get through this one plus it has to get through that one. So we can get the equivalent resistance just by adding them all up. Okay, so we can get the total voltage by adding up all the voltages, all the voltage drops. We can, or you can think of it as the total voltage drop must be split up among all the parts. Uh, the, res the equivalent resistance is adding up all the resistances. And finally, the current. We know if we add a resistor, we know the current gets weaker there's l or slower, there's less current. Um, 
but what is the current like through resistor one or through resistor two or through resistor three? Well, let's take a look at it. So if let's just say at point, point uh, A here, the, the point indicated there on the circuit, um, we had uh, a current of three amps. Three coulombs are flowing past that point each second. Well, let's look on the other side of the first resistor here. If the current was bigger than three coulombs per second, that would mean we've got three coulombs coming into this a resistor each second and four or more leaving it each second, well, that resistor is going to empty of electrons. If it empties of electrons, that means it's got, going to get this huge positive charge, which is going to draw electrons to it, okay, which is going to keep them from flowing away from it. Okay, it's also going to draw them to it faster. So the instant there's any sort of imbalance like this, it's going to correct itself and make it so the current has to be the same coming in and going out. Let's look at the opt example to see that it's true both ways. If our current going in was three and our current going out was only two, well, if we had three coulombs coming in and only two coulombs going out, well, we're ending up with more electrons in this uh, light bulb than we started with. Okay, and that would mean we're gaining a negative charge. Well, if we're gaining a negative charge, that's going to keep these from coming in. It's going to slow them down because they aren't going to want to go towards a negative. And it's going to speed them up going away, and it'll correct the imbalance immediately. Okay, what am I saying? Well, basically what we're saying is that everywhere in this circuit, if it's a series circuit and there's only one path for the electrons to follow, well, then the current everywhere has to be the same. Otherwise, we end up getting a little buildup. That buildup corrects itself, and so the current will always have to be the same everywhere in the series circuit. One way of saying that is the current through, through the battery has to equal the current uh, through the first light bulb, which has to equal the current through the second light bulb, which has to equal the current through the third light bulb, which has to equal the current through the fourth light bulb. You could even sit, pick any point in the wire. All The current at any point has to be the same as anywhere else. Otherwise, we get that imbalance, which then corrects itself. And so that's what, that's what we have for a series circuit, uh, is uh, the voltages all have to add up to the total voltage. The resistances all add up to the equivalent resistance, and the current has to be the same everywhere. All right, uh, have a good day, and we'll see you next time to learn about parallel circuits. Have a good day. The current through the battery equals, which you could call the total current, uh, is equal to the current through resistor 1 and the current through resistor 2. Plus, the, or which is equal to the current through resistor three, which is equal to the current through resistor four. Can you take to, can you take to bed?